Welcome to episode 22 of Who That. I'm your host, Tim May, and this is the last one for the year. Don't worry, it's not the last one ever, this is the last one for the year. Um, my guest today is Lashanti the Siren. Thanks for having me. The Siren. So, uh, I I saw I spoke about bringing back who that like early July and Lashanti was the first person, <laughs> the first person that asked me to come on the show. So I couldn't let the year go by, and not so so she gets the for her her her, her, her prize of being the first to ask is the finale, Thank season you. one finale. Um, but before we go any further, shout out our sponsors, Collect the Band of Bahamas, cause like me to chill and Ricardo Rum uniquely Bahamian. So Lashanti the Siren. Yeah. I'm a siren because I think we're mermaid. I don't see you have your red locks. I, I think you know, <laughs> Aria. So just talk to me about this this lifestyle. This way, just talk to me about. T- don't talk to me like I tan, but talk to me like I, like I don't know what, what we talking about. I, I, I like the logo. I like the logo. Thank you. Is thank that you. yours? Or that's like yeah, that's it's what's... mine. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely my logo. I got this made ooh, earlier this year from a mm-hmm. friend of mine who does graphic design. Shout out to Trico Designs for doing this logo. I might have to change it a bit though because at the time my hair was not locked. Ah. It was never blue. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you, need to, yeah. you need to like just color, color it in and like do the because I don't know if you saw um, the, the new little mermaid is played by a black actor yes. and she got like red locks going yes. on so okay, okay yeah she was actually the inspiration because I know nice. for a very long time I've always known I was a mermaid uh-huh. um, I chose the term siren instead of the conventional mermaid because one I feel like there were a lot of people kind of running around like oh I'm a mermaid it's, especially after that like Zed Nest story and thing too yeah, I was actually in that story. Nice, nice. Yes, yes. The mermaid community is very close-knit here in the Bahamas. So I know all of the other mermaids. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I know that I also sing. And sirens are like these mythological creatures they that sing. Yeah, that they death. lure men to their yeah, death. So yeah. I thought, you know what? It would be really cool to kind of be sitting on we call, what we call the rock, right? We mm-hmm. in Nassau, we in the Bahamas. We live in all these rocks. Um, and rather than sing and bring people to their detriment, kind of use my voice as a way to encourage people to want to protect these rocks that we live on. Um, so that's where I kind of coined this this whole okay, I'm Lashanti the siren versus being like the mermaid. So, but that's so let's unpack this for us. Not 10, not 10, more like 15. What is <laughs> exactly is a mermaid? So, a mermaid, um, if you're looking at just the conventional term, is obviously half fish, half woman, right, right. or man, yeah. right? Merman, merman exists, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but I know for a lot of us in the community, we like to look at it as that in between. Um, between humans and the ocean. So we like to look at ourselves as kind of the advocates of the ocean. So we have that connection with people and we try to connect the people with the ocean because we have this connection with the ocean and we just want we just want people to understand how important it is and how crucial it is to to protect something like the ocean and all of the amazing things that we get from it. So you said earlier you always knew you were mermaid. At what point in your life did you know like you have this special connection with, with the ocean? <laughs> So I always like to tell people I didn't really grow up in Nassau. Mm. I grew up in Coral Harbor, and it felt like a completely different world. Yeah, I, whenever I drive, there, my, friend, my friends say you live west. Say where you live? No, it's west. Mm-hmm. And then it's Coral Harbor. It's two separate. Different, it's two different exactly. things. Exactly. Exactly. So I always felt like I grew up with more of like this island flair because I would always want to go out to the beach that was not very far, and I just always liked floating in the ocean and. It, it was always just something about that. And people always used to say, oh, like a mermaid. And I used to watch some of the little shows that, that talked about kids finding out at their 13th birthday that they were a mermaid, which I'd hoped it would happen for me. <laughs> so you over there, you just like, splash of water and you just grow, grow it You know, we can dream. But So by the time I was like 12 or 13, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say it anyway. And so a lot of my friends from high school or anybody who knew me from back then kind of always knew that it was something about me and the ocean and the environment. So... Mission accomplished. <laughs> okay, so our first sponsor, um, and we already, I guess we already jumped the shot because our first sponsor is Cause Light and then the nickname is Silver Bullet. But you already expanded on your nickname, The Siren. Just talk to me about, um, so I guess the reaction to people when you started calling yourself The Siren. Was there, was there any like groans and eye rolling or if you know Lashanti, you already, you already know this. Like, cause I've known you a long time. And I've, I've also <laughs> always known your connection to nature. I didn't know that, that much, but I knew you, but I still knew that much. Was it like a... Oh, that's girl. When was she a no? But was it some of that? Or no, it was just like you said. People always just kind of knew Lashanti, and it was almost synonymous with anything related to the environment. Um, so a lot of people who knew me just were kind of like, "Oh, okay, we expected that. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. we expected you to kind of turn out this way," which. I was assuming as a compliment and I still am going to take it that way. But yeah, I think I've done really well to kind of just building this identity of like 
when you think of Lashanti, you think of nature and you think of the ocean. And, and that's always been very important to me. So I'm actually pretty fortunate that people automatically was like, oh, we're not surprised. We're not surprised that you finally did something like this. So, <laughs> so take me through the getting this from this mindset to a career path. Like, what did you study in school and, and how, like, the full-time job? Just take me through actually turning this passion and this connection into something that pays the bills. Yeah. So, um, very early on, I always knew, of course, I wanted to work in the marine environment. And I actually interned at a facility here working with dolphins. Um, and I was like, oh, I want to be a marine animal vet. Mm -hmm. Finally graduated high school. I did a year at COB, now called UB. Mm -hmm. It was in biochem. Yeah, we, yeah, we did a little one. You see, my, my, <laughs> I have like two grades on the side now. So we, it's COB for us. Right. So, I, and I always keep interchanging those. But I did biochem that year. But I always knew, you know, I want to go off and study marine biology. Went off to school to Barry University, which is actually pretty well known here, especially now. Yeah, so my sister currently is enrolled at Barry, right. doing a master's. My mother did Barry for like two years. So it's very, oh. I think, I think excuse, excuse that they used yeah. to have, they'd be at. Yeah. yeah, so they actually, I think we were one of their interna first international branches. Nice. And that was, nice. when I was at Barry, that was in the works. So they were excited to hear, oh, we have more Bahamian students. Awesome. Um, I know their youngest graduate was actually the former attorney general. Um, oh, okay. I hate that I can't remember her name right now, but um, she was like 16 yeah. or 18 when she graduated. So, so don't show this. We're not political people, so I wouldn't, we wouldn't know. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I studied marine biology and about five weeks into it, I was like, you know what? I don't want to be a veterinarian anymore. I just want to do this marine biology. I had my summer job at the same facility and I always enjoyed just talking to kids, adults, any age group, anybody, just about why it's important to protect the ocean. And I just always kind of felt like I like talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always loved talking. And so just trying to combine those two things together just seemed to make the most sense. I ended up working at Bahamas National Trust for a couple of years. And a lot of my work centered around traveling across the country, 11 islands, I think was in total, just talking to communities about why it's important to have marine protected areas. Again, I get to do two things that I love to do be in the ocean, talk about the ocean and talk to people. So I always found myself kind of doing these things where it's just connecting the two, building this community around the ocean. And I ended up going on a conference sponsored <laughs> um, to Barbados where I met other people in the Caribbean who also worked in marine protected areas. And this one girl was like, you know, Lashanti, you have great personality. She's from Guyana. So shout out to Odacy Davis. She's like, I think you should you know, apply to this master's program in conservation leadership at mm. University of Cambridge. Nice. First of all, I never thought about going to the UK and University of Cambridge just sounded too out of my league. <laughs> but it sounds I, so know, prestigious. Right. I was like, I mean, I know I got it, but I know if I got it, got it. Right. And about maybe two or three weeks before the deadline, she had like kind of asked, like, hey, did you ever apply to that? I said, you know what? No, but you know what? Why not? Let me just shoot my shot. Fast forward, I get a full ride awesome. <laughs> to do this program at University of Cambridge. And even in, in that- In person? In person, yeah. Okay, nice. Right before the pandemic. And actually the last day of our taught classes was the last day that anybody was allowed to do anything wow. in person. Divine. Yeah, so that worked out for me. And even through that, they were like, oh, you're such a great speaker. I was class representative. They wanted me to do all these things. And even a lot of the organizations that were in Cambridge really wanted to kind of hear about my work and what I did in the Bahamas. So- during the pandemic, I had actually come home for a couple of months. I was approached by the Sustainable Lifestyle Group to be on a panel. And I did so well on that panel. They asked me to do it again. And I said, you know what? You know, a lot of people kept approaching me and was like, oh, it's so interesting to hear people talk about, you know, some of the conservation things that are happening in the Bahamas. We had no idea that these types of projects were happening, no idea that these research things were happening. You should do it more. So I was kind of like, oh, okay, maybe I should kind of like have a show. I've always kind of said, you know, I want to be on a show. I want to have my own show. And so I started off with the Sustainable Lifestyle Group, just kind of doing um, twice a month, just talking to people related to climate change. But I would always want to add a marine flair to it, even mm -hmm. though they were more focused on terrestrial. So eventually I decided to branch off, which then birthed... Um, Siren me just Sundays. right well it was always called siren sundays but oh. it birthed kind of like okay lashanti the siren and siren sundays is its own entity i made my own instagram and i just in the midst of the pandemic in the middle of my master's program i kind of just launched myself into the siren sundays project um personal project passion project had no idea that five months later i would be signing a contract and officially become profitable you know i would just oh nice yeah so, so you, like is this a sponsorship or is this a sponsorship they sponsor the show or do they partner with you as a brand and so what it is there's a regional ngo or non-governmental organization mm -hmm. um called mpa connect and they are funded by NOAA's Fisheries Institute, NOAA being NOAA, the National Oceanographic 
Atmospheric Alliance. Oh, I learned so much things. Some, and listen, this, this field is so full of acronyms just because these words get so big. <laughs> but everyone knows about NOAA and OAA because they're the ones in America that monitor hurricanes as well. Ah, right. So that okay. connection kind of comes into play. So because of the work that I've been doing before, I kind of knew some of the people there and they really liked the show. And they were like, hey, can you do a special edition? Where are they located, NOAA? Or is oh. that all over? Do they have like it's, it's a region. The MPA Connect um, program is regional. Mm -hmm. um, Emma Doyle kind of leads it. She's Australian, but she's been living in the Caribbean for years. So mm -hmm. it doesn't particularly have like a, a oh. physical oh. base, okay. Okay. but it is an a regional network of all of these marine protected areas across the Caribbean. And so they approached my... From their page, they approached my Lashanti the Siren page they and was they, like, they slid in your DMs. Right, they slid in my DMs and was like, we'd really like you to host this, uh, like a kind of a special edition podcast for us where you interview some of our MBA managers, get them a little bit more profile, and, you know, we'll pay you. At first, I was going to do it for free, but when <laughs> they said we'll pay you, I was like, sure, that cost. Right, I was like, sure. So oh. I definitely, um, I was able to get a return on my investment, like I said, within five months. So it just kind of, Further motivated me, like, it's just one of those things where if you have this idea, and I always tell people, if you have an idea, as silly or as crazy as it may sound or feel, you have to just, just follow through because mm -hmm. ideas never disappear. Someone else might get the same idea and then they're profiting and you're just kind of like, oh, I wish I had done that. Mm -hmm. So Just put yourself out there. You never, you never know. You never know. So I had ended up um, hosting Island Cleanups. That was also something else I got paid for. Um, earlier in the year. Unfortunately, we kind of ran into some kinks with that. So I'm hoping to relaunch that in the new year. New year. Um, but yeah, so I've still just been kind of pushing through. The last season I did was three months straight. And that was the first season where I actually offered the option of sponsorship. And I was actually surprised. I got all three months sponsored. Nice. Right. And I was just like, wow, it's just one of those things where when you're kind of like walking in your purpose, right? And your passion, everything, was, everything, yeah, everything just kind of opens up for you. So... It's been a great journey so far. I'm hoping that I can continue expanding. I'd like to be in a studio and not just in my room, you know, with like a backdrop, just talking to people maybe, on maybe Zoom. Maybe you could, you could talk to our producer and he could, you know, <laughs> you could join the, the Solid Network, you know. It's, you know that's a, you that's know, an you idea. Could, you could up, you know. And you, and you could be in there and record, record sometimes, hmm, you know. That would be good. That would be very interesting um, because I do think, in the expansion, it would be nice to just get out mm -hmm. <laughs> and see these people in person. I mm -hmm. think it, it always creates a and different dynamic. most of these dynamic. people who you went to today are here? They are Bahamians and... So, hmm, that's actually a good point. Most of the people I've interviewed are Bahamian or doing research in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. um, a few of them have not been based in Nassau. I've had, I think, a couple that were in Eleuthera. I got the chance to interview crystal ambrose which i'm sure everyone knows she's the ocean plastic crystal ocean um she got i helped. actually didn't know so yeah she was one of the ones that did a lot of that research that helped to push the plastic ban ah uh, um, okay, yeah. okay okay so okay. she's her organization is called bahamas plastic movement mm -hmm. she's currently away doing a phd in I'm pretty sure sweden don't i hope i'm correct <laughs> but point is way she across far, the she world far away, she yeah. far, right yeah, and yeah. when i started this even though i started doing it at home for a period of time when I was doing this show, I was actually still in the UK trying to finish up my master's program. Mm -hmm. So in moving home um, in January of this year, I've been continuing to do it. And most of them have been in Nassau. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most of my guests, the last couple of guests have been in Nassau. But like I said, it's, you know, a COVID lot of people. Stuff, yeah. yeah, a lot right. of people has been hard. So our next sponsor, Mercado Rum, they are, their tagline is uniquely Bahamian. So what is your uniquely Bahamian thing that you like to do? And you can't say ocean because your whole brand is thin of the water. So you as a, as a, my answer is I like to eat, eat uh, comforters and drink sky juice. That's my uniquely Bahamian thing to do. My uniquely Bahamian thing to do. Other than the water. Other than the water. Hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, because I, I feel like my uniquely Bahamian thing is to go to the beach, yeah. not just on the holiday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you don't want them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I'm true to this. <laughs> I know <knew> this. <laughs> but I would like to say, for the purposes of this specific question, my uniquely Bahamian thing is getting out and doing some of those island cleanups where I encourage other Bahamians to kind of take ownership for your environment. And the most pollution I see on the beach is always after the holidays. Sadly, yeah. Very sadly. And... I like to encourage people to, you know, if I'm hosting a cleanup, like, let's get out and let's just spend an hour or two just, just picking up the trash. And when people do it, I think it just kind of makes them more aware. When they go. Right. Yeah. And then when people see you doing it, 
and you're not in your government because, you know, government workers, some of them are mandated to clean beaches. But when they see actual like regular people, kids, I've had a woman come out with her dog and her and her dog was picking up trash. When they see that, it sparks the question, oh, who are you guys and why are you doing this? We're just Bahamians who are concerned about having a clean beach. We want to make sure that the pollution doesn't get into the ocean because we enjoy coming to the beach. So that's my uniquely Bahamian thing. And our last one's to collect um, the Bad Bahamas. What's your favorite color? I am a true blue collect gold girl. Oh, you, oh, you want you, you want your hair get hair off? You want <laughs> gold. So that's like seven percent. I like the platinum because I said so. Come on, so mm. platinum. Okay, six percent. So I like I not on you, but you like you like a gold. I like my nice icy cold gold. Just like this a real, it's a hard little Yeah, that's yeah. me. And I actually just had one over the weekend, so I definitely, <laughs> whenever I want to like unwind and just chill out, my all my friends know. Collect gold, okay. We'll get collect gold, and, and that's me. I put it in the freezer for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely that. So you mentioned earlier, a lot of people around the world are like shocked what we're doing conservation wise and all this stuff. Educate us on what Bahama, what the Bahamas actually is doing and how we are ahead or in line with what's happening around the Caribbean and the world. So the Bahamas, of course, as we know, our beautiful country is. One of the smallest countries, but we're affected so much by climate change, as we saw with Hurricane Dorian um, and just these storms getting stronger and crazier. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we did not have a crazy hurricane season, oh, thankfully. thankfully. But um, the Bahamas actually, when it came to the Marine um, Protected Area Challenge that was signed, uh, everyone in 11 countries in the Caribbean had pledged that by 2020, we're going to have 20% of our marine environment protected. The Bahamas actually met that goal, and for a very long time during that project, we were actually leading the region. And with a lot of the projects and a lot of the things that we do in marine conservation, we're actually leading the way, um, which I think is phenomenal. So a lot of times when people hear, oh, I do marine biology, and I'm from the Bahamas, it's like, that's immediately like lights go off, like, mm -hmm. oh, we'd like to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And even when I was in Cambridge, believe it or not, me, one little girl from the island, everyone who was doing any sort of marine project, I'm talking about marine projects happening in Cambodia. I didn't even really wow. know Cambodia had a marine, you know, thing going on. They were like, hey, can we actually have you come and talk to our staff? We're really interested in, <sighs> right, getting some information about what the wow. Bahamas is doing. Um, and, I guess and, it's lucky, a good thing that you had to experience first before the world, because <laughs> then you'd be like, sorry, I know yet. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that program does appeal, to be fair, to yeah. people who are already in their career, but I was fortunate that I had really had a lot of hands-on work with... Um, you said like BNT and stuff yeah. like that? So yeah, the Bahamas National Trust, I had a lot of work with international funding agencies and a lot of international... Um, pledges that our country signed on because BNT is quasi government. Mm -hmm. Talking a lot about BNT. I work at the Perry Institute for Marine Science right now. I was asked you that who was, is a that, partner. That's my next question. Who was your next? Yeah. <laughs> and so I will get into them. Yeah. Um because I gotta shout them out. They've mm -hmm. done a lot of great work and I really enjoy working with the team that I have. But um in my earlier career years, um, I was fortunate that Mama's National Trust gave me the opportunity to represent the country. Um, I got to go to Colombia to represent our country and talk about how our marine environment is feasibly important for us because of the ways it contributes to our economy. Um, and so there were a lot of international projects that we signed on for that the government has pledged to do that we at the Bahamas National Trust, along with other NGOs like the Perry Institute for Marine Science, are helping to kind of lead and push the work for. Thanks. So... Yeah, I was fortunate that I got exposed to a lot of those things. So when they would throw these acronyms at me, like oh, I would throw them at you. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know, yeah. I know what that is. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I know I'm what the, the well ABC aware. and the FTX, <laughs> and, you know, all these Exactly. So I, I was able to kind of have a good footing. Um, and I can definitely shout out my colleague who went with me, Lindy Knowles. He still works at Bahamas National Trust. He's their senior marine science officer. He did the course with me, and it was great having him there with me because we covered, like, both sides of the spectrum. So. Nice. Shout talk talk to talk me about home base now, home base, Perry Institute. Yes. So I was lucky to work with the Perry Institute for Marine Science, and we just call it PIMS for short. PIMS. Um, okay. Yeah. So when I was at BNT, we always partnered with them. The PIMS has been around for 50 years. We're actually celebrating 50 years this year because awesome. COVID caused us to have yeah, to postpone. So, yeah, so. <laughs> right. So it's secondly 51, yeah, but yeah. we're doing it this year. Of course, of course. Um, but the Perry Institute for Marine Science has definitely been leading the way in Bahamian ocean conservation research. Uh, we have a part of our organization called the Reef Rescue Network, where not only in the Bahamas, but in other countries in the Caribbean, we actually are growing different types of corals in our coral tree nurseries just to kind of build a resilience in our coral reef. Coral reefs are so important for our little limestone islands because mm -hmm. it helps kind of break down that wave energy that can erode the shores. 
the program that I'm currently in, which just launched in 2019, but also kind of got just delayed a bit <laughs> because that, of COVID. That, that COVID. Right, is the Community Conservation Education Action Program. And they made me feel so welcome. My director, um, Carlisa Callwood, uh, and our executive director, Dr. Craig Dahlgren, they're both doctors in Marine. <laughs> so, like, so like, are you next? Uh, did, uh, I, Dr. Don't, I don't know. I mean, I just did this master's. I got to have to think <laughs> about it. But um, they definitely were very happy to welcome me on the team because this program deals a lot with outreach and, and speaking to the community and with my past experience and me being this true blue Bahamian and mm. really wanting to get, you know, the community involved in this stuff. Um, they were more than happy to exci and excited to have me on the team. So we have a lot of things in the works. So you'll be seeing a lot more of us um, in the next year. So I'm excited about all the things we're working on. I heard something on the news this week about like there's a coral disease that can't be cured or something like that. Yes. So that is stony coral tissue loss disease. And we've actually just been kind of calling it coral COVID okay. because it spreads so quickly. Um, and it originally started more in our northern region because Florida had their really first bad sighting of it. And it, it's literally wiping out the coral. Uh -huh. So it's really important now for the work that we're doing in relation to growing new, healthy, resilient coral. We're finding coral that are actually in areas that are being affected, but realizing that these ones aren't. So basic genetics lesson if you have the genes that are resilient towards a virus or any sort of disease, these are the genes you want in the next generation. Mm -hmm. So we've been really good at finding really strong coral to kind of help repopulate some of these damaged areas. And while working on the cure to um, kind of like any corals that are already affected, it kind of just spreads around it. So we actually are trying out, well, not at this time, but in the past we've tried out like antibiotic treatments. Mm -hmm. Like they actually have these as a medicines mm -hmm. for corals. So, mm -hmm. We're really hoping our research can kind of help push that on a global scale. That'd um, be awesome. Yeah, because the corals are what make the Bahamas the Bahamas, right? right. So. so you got two more days of the year and in about to be 2022. What can people expect from Siren Sundays in 2022? Oh, this is a big question. And this is definitely a question I've been thinking about for the last half of this year. I definitely am going to shift all of my shows into a podcast format. I currently have just been holding this one spot on Spotify <laughs> <laughs> with this one episode, but definitely more Siren Sundays. Um, the people love it. The people are going to keep getting it. I hope to start featuring more students who are currently studying in um, the environmental sector. That's marine and terrestrial. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to relaunch my island cleanup initiative, which is important, especially for a lot of school kids. They really like coming out and getting that community service, but also learning mm -hmm. you know, about this. Mm -hmm. um, and they can definitely just expect... More from my website, <laughs> lashantijup.com. Um, I definitely plan to just keep building the brand, raising the profile, and just trying to connect more people to the marine environment. So this has been the season finale of episode season one of Who That Two for Two, which is your host, Tim A. And we have a, a live mermaid, the siren, on with us. <laughs> um, I'm so happy that we could talk about like this because like, I really love my country, as everyone knows, and I'm happy for the, the, the job you guys are doing. And I hope, you know, like you said, this research could... Go to a grand scale and save the girl. Definitely. So we could get you out to clean up. <laughs> I actually want to talk to you off here. But for sure, I'm coming. I got so you. So just tell people where they can find you. So you can find me at lashantijup.com. That's J-U-P-P. -P. <laughs> or you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook, Lashanti the Siren, or at Lashanti underscore Siren. This has been Huda, and see you next year.